everyone, welcome to Sensational South. I'm Hari Shupadhyay. For the next 30 minutes, we bring you all the major news and newsmakers in South India. Our top story today comes from Tamil Nadu. 31 years after the assassination of former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, Supreme Court ordered the premature release of six convicts, including Nalini Hariharan. Nalini, after her release, spoke to my colleague Purnima Murli and said justice has been served finally. How does it feel? Are you finally free? I hope so. And you know, uh, um, every feelings are there. I put you all under the camp, but your husband under the trichy camp couldn't be there. Inno under the, I'm going to send there. No, your daughter under send there. Mandamari, that you all get. Any more? Any more feelings? If you all get. Ah, our two people share no under our. That is, our wife car under the night when they are in the car. Very, very upset. I did not. Our no da baru baru na neither part ang pona ang yar me enta sollo bela. Apama ande jail department yar enta sollo la. Apama our camp kutit porangan so nangar umban upset ay ta. Enal sagi kewe mudi la ande our tarunat ay enoraya. Vidu dalay enta our anu bo me na kuatan jis sederi poits. Ang vidu kare na apri paton na. Mupat rende wacitik apro tirumbu ang our poite ada pati kadekno. Sultra anga ade jail la vidu mosam ay kuanda yadam obtain solite. Adalah rombong ayah manusia customer aje. Inne kian aku beri dulu ayat aje, nanti sanjo semua pada mudi ada ayat. Anki, anda nanda sambat le selipero, orang lor loved ones yang lose panik kanga. Awanggal solra angin, de beri dulu le bandit, awanggal injustice sa tevidan. Awanggal kini ena solu berum tengga. Ada solu ni, nana apa we? Muppad wershan angga, nanda nanu bocirko. Ada orang lek patilan ninge nani keringla. Naga, tiga nali liyo, tiga nimshit liyo, ialah na tiga warshit liyo, naga beli lebar langga, mupat rendu warshan kalicin naga beli le mandiru kong. Innu umgul ke sandow sama illya naga danta nanu bocito ninge nene kili ya. Mam kasi kili mam Gandhi family member Sonia Gandhi, priyanka Gandhi Rahul Gandhi ki, ninge nene message solle berum bringa. Aunggul ke romban antri solra, aunggul ke flu perih kaya irko ide, apin terdi ya nala unara mudi ide, ana mande. Ya, nala kono saya mudiya ada I'm helpless. Ana, awangge, lalar nalla arknu, nena daily prayer paniterka. It's a revolt of sorts in southern India. It's the war between the government and the governor in Telangana, in Tamil Nadu, and in Kerala. From holding up of bills to appointments, it's a lot of allegations going back and forth. So, who is crossing the line? We'll debate that, but first the story. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Telangana. Three states, one big fight. It's governors versus state governments. After repeated spats between the Kerala government and governor, the Pinaray Vijayan cabinet decided to bring in an ordinance to take away the role of the Chancellor of Universities from the governor. But Arif Muhammad Khan remained defiant. Let that stage come. And I had said, whatever crisis comes, I will not sign on the uh, address if you, are, if you will try to control Raj Bhavan. Drawing first blood, the state government amended the rules of the Kerala Kalamandalam deemed university to remove the governor as its chancellor. The position will now be filled by an eminent person from the field of art and culture. It's a similar story in Tamil Nadu. Calling governor R. N. Ravi a threat to peace the DMK has submitted a memorandum to the president seeking his removal from office. The memorandum listed 20 bills passed by the assembly that are awaiting the governor's assent. These include one to take away the governor's powers to appoint vice chancellors and give them to the state government instead. In Telangana too, the ruling TRS has accused Governor Tamil Sai Sondarajan of sitting on some bills forwarded by the government for her assent. Refuting the allegation, the governor claimed that her phones might be tapped. I can take my, take my own time to assess the bills. It was wrongly projected that I am sitting on the bills. I doubt my phone is taped. My privacy is interfered. While the governor is an apolitical head who acts on the advice of the Council of Ministers, there are no guidelines in the constitution for the exercise of the governor's powers. So who exactly is crossing the line here? Yes, who exactly is crossing the line? We'll debate that. We have an eminent panel joining us today. We have uh, Ms. Uma Anandan, who's a BJP leader from Tamil Nadu. 
We have uh, Advocate Kaleswaram Raj, who's a senior Supreme Court advocate. We have Sebastian Paul, who's a former independent MP who is backed by the left. I'll come to you, Mr. Raj, first. In all these three cases, who's crossing the Lakshman Rekha? Who's going beyond the powers given by the Constitution? There is absolutely no doubt regarding that. I strongly believe that the governors in these states, the South Indian states, are clearly exceeding the constitutional boundaries and doing something in excess by not doing what is required to be done by the Constitution. When an ordinance is passed mm. or when a bill is passed by the respective legislature, it is a duty or it is rather constitutionally incumbent upon the government to give an assent, either to give an assent or to send it to refer it to the president in case it is required, some note from the president also is required depending upon subject matter. And thirdly, he can send it back for reconsideration mm. in case he finds that there is some vitiating circumstances, you know, the circumstance touching the bill or ordinance. He cannot take a stand. He or she cannot take an outright stand that he or she will not give an assent at all. That is something which is impermissible by the Constitution. Can, can because, they sit on that bill? Can they sit, sit on that bill without any sort of a deadline? That cannot be. Indefinitely, they cannot sit on the bill. The, pro, the pro, position is precisely like this. Earlier, we had the Governor General hmm. and we had the governor's minister. That was what was contemplated by the 1858 Government of India Act, which was subsequently modified in 1935. After the constitution, it is not the governor general, but it is the selected governor only. It is not the governor's ministers or chief minister. It is the pupils' chief minister and pupils' ministers. Therefore, when the governor says that he will not grant an assent to the bill or the ordinance, he precisely says that he will ignore the mandate of the pupil, or rather that he, he will ignore the mandate of constitutional democracy. Okay, Ms. Umanandan, it, is, it will be See? inferred as the governor ignoring the mandate of the people. How would you respond 20 bills pending with the governor in Tamil Nadu? It really holds up administration is one argument and also it breaks down the relationship between the Raj Bhavan and the Vidhan Sabha of that uh, respective state. See, if he talks about the responsibility, then I would like to take back the toss back to, to say whether the chief minister and his team are fulfilling the responsibilities given to them by the people of the state. When they are erring in their duties, how can they point out the fingers on a constitutional authority? They want a yes man in Raj Bhavan. They want somebody who sits and stands up at their go back, sit down, stand up. Is that is that type of a person they want? And when they want, they rush to the governor. Isn't it? So the governor is a constitutional authority and he stands. And I would like to ask this gentleman a question. What about the governor, they are saying that he is going beyond the limits in his talking because he talks about Hindutva, Sanatana Dharma. He is not hurting any religious person. Why? The chief minister has appointed hmm. Subhavira Pandian from Dravidar Karagam, whose sole survival is based on hmm. Hindu bashing and mocking at Hindus, their gods, their practices. And he sits on a textbook authority, same way as Leoni. What is the answer they're going to give for that? When they have failed, they cannot expect a yes but, man but why, in why don't we? Bhavan. Why are we they not can't. seeing? Why are we not seeing such problems in BJP ruled states? We are not seeing governors no. being so effect uh, in in a way going against the state government in BJP ruled That's states. That's what I wanted to tell. Your topic is southern revolt. I would like to rephrase it to say it is a mm. southern revival or southern renaissance where the, the, all the governments, the southern states have suffered mad, mm. badly under the family-oriented dynastic rule. Let's put an end to the dynasty rule and give okay. precedence to, uh, you said that Kalamandalam University. Why are people with merit not given post? Mm. They want to give it to their own family members? Okay. And cronies it's, in the party? It's, it's, not, it's not a revolt, it's a revival, says the BJP. Uh, Mr. Sebastian Paul, she's saying 
what is wrong if governors start taking a stance or voice their opinion in public? No, here what we see is that lofty constitutional principles have suddenly become issues of political issues. Here the governor is crossing his limits. Mm -hmm. Governor is not responsible, exclusively responsible for good governance in the state. There will, there will be administrative lapses, mm -hmm. constitutional irregularities, and it is for the constitutional courts to correct it. The governor has no power of judicial review. He has powers given to him by the constitution, mm -hmm. but here in Kerala, the governor is stubbornly refusing to comply with the constitutional provisions. He is refusing to sign bills passed by the mm. assembly. He is refusing to sign the ordinance given to him by the cabinet. All those things are here and he is at war. Mm. It is not a, 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 a incidental thing to see that all the three non-BJP chief ministers in the south are at lower heads with their respective governors. So the governor as the political agent of the ruling party at the center, he is trying to um, uh, the, okay, you're saying the, the, perhaps they are political the agents. Agenda. I'll, I'll take a question to Mr. Raj. We've had two committees uh, talking about the role of governor, the selection of the governor. Both of those Kerala committees have spoken on why governor. it's important to ensure that some of these powers are taken away from the governor, especially appointment to universities. There's also a suggestion yes. saying that there should be a cooling period, especially if you're bringing in a political personality into Raj Bhavan. Mr. Kaleshwaram Raj, do you believe that will be a solution? Because we have seen BJP government suffering under governors appointed by the UPA time. We have seen that during Edirapa's chief minister in 2008. So it's just a repeat of the same story, sites change. I appreciate the question. Uh, in fact, both the commission reports, including the Sakaria commission report, I would rather think that there is a lot of romanticism uh, in both these reports, but very many recommendations at the same time are pragmatic, intelligent, mm. and worthy of uh, being considered. This is my general view on that. The Sakaria Commission said that the mm. governor should act as the friend, philosopher, and guide of the cabinet. And this is the purpose of the seminal judgment of the Supreme mm. Court in Samsir Singh, 1974. Hmm. But see, com coming to the issue in hand, hmm. we, if we go by these commission's reports, all the commission reports, Punji commission report, as well as the Sarkaria commission report, and several other studies as well, said that the governor's role, hmm. my learned friend was asking the question, if the chief minister goes wrong, what is the remedy? If the chief minister goes wrong, if the cabinet goes wrong, the remedy lies in the next election. It is an mm. issue between the selected mm. governor, nominated governor on the one hand, and elected cabinet on the other hand. And that is the, mm. that is the situation with respect to democratic legitimacy. If the cabinet goes wrong, the answer lies mm. in the hands of the pupil. They will react in the next election that is guaranteed by the constitution. Whereas when the governor goes wrong, that's a big issue. Here is the situation, you know that. Going by Article mm. 200, when mm. the somebody passes a bill, that is an, it may be a right bill or a wrong bill, a good mm. law or a bad law, but that remains the expression mm. of will of the pupil, and that is its democratic legitimacy. Now a governor yes. nominated. Yes, Uman, and the, the larger question, ma'am, here is who will hold the governor accountable? No, if the I governor is going wrong, who will hold them accountable? Uh, the governor is accountable to the president of India. He is not accountable to the chief minister of any state. Hmm. And one more thing I would like to ask. He says, if the chief minister goes wrong, but he's, so he's supposed to punish for he's, five years. He's supposed to is follow the decisions minute, of the... One minute. I would he's like supposed to, to follow the decision the of the cabinet, ma'am. Vice chancellor's post and all, are they to be hmm. distributed among the family members and the party cronies? Just because they happen to be... I told you about two or three instances hmm. in Tamil Nadu. Why should we tolerate all that? We are supposed to be hmm. punished for five years. Why can't the chief minister rectify the mistakes? Is he not responsible enough? Is he a puppet in the hands hmm. then? And what about the speaker? The speaker, he can hmm. be a, he can be a, the, his master's voice in the assembly. The speaker is also about, hmm. supposed to be about but, politics. But do you, believe, do you believe now that 
the time is right to look at some sort of a reform on appointments to Raj Bhavan because BJP, as no. I mentioned, has suffered when UPA has appointed governors. We have seen that in Edirapa's time in Karnataka. Yes, it was a Congress mantra. Congress mantra of Ayaram, Dayaram, midnight, midnight, 12 o'clock, uh, Dr. Hmm. Abdul Kalam being called to sign. We have seen all those dramas. So let's not forget. Let's not forget what all the Congress did. Hmm. So let's not be on a patronizing thing to say, summonize hmm. now. Okay. Mr. Sebastian Paul, they are saying that, well, it was the same case when UPA was in power. We complained then, nothing much happened. And now we have governors taking stance. Why is the opposition complaining now? The, the difficulty is that with the office of the governor itself. If the governors, whether it is they were appointed by hmm. the Congress or UPA or by the BJP and the NDA, the very same thing happens in opposition ruled states. That is why we have to accuse the office of governor hmm. as a, a as a political agent or representative of the union government. So we have to find out some drastic way in which hmm. this can be avoided and how the governors can be appointed in the true federal spirit and according to the federal principles. The opposition is making empty noises for nothing at all. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Mr. Paul, complete your point. Yes, I have completed my point. My case is that, as we have uh, saying, saying from the very beginning, that the appointment of the governor to a state hmm. shall not be in an arbit arbitrary manner by the center or the center union home minister. Okay. It should be in a democratic way, keeping in, spirit, okay. keeping in mind the spirit of federalism in the country. Okay, all right, uh, we are running out of time. Thank you, all three of you, Ms. Uma Anandan, Advocate Kaleswaram Raj, and Mr. Sebastian Paul. Definitely, this has triggered a debate on how people are appointed to the Raj Pavan, but uh, is the union government willing for a reform, and why didn't the opposition go for a reform when they went power? These are questions that will remain unanswered for the coming few months and years. Well, that's it on this debate on the topic of governor versus government will slip into a short break now on the other side we'll get you more news from south india girl